Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Women's Rugby Show. I'm Sam Bardo, and today I'm here with another Discussions with a Cupper episode, where today we'll be talking about round two of the Women's Six Nations, which takes place this weekend. First up, we've got England against Italy, and we've also got Ireland against Wales at Cardiff Farms Park, and really luckily, we'll be travelling down to Cardiff for that one. Make sure you watch these games live this weekend as they're both live on the BBC iPlayer. And also don't forget to update your Women's Six Nations fantasy team, maybe taking a few tips from this episode. But before we get into discussing it, make sure you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, we aim to reach 1,000 followers, subscribers, sorry, and also follow us across all social medias and check out all the content we produce there during the weeks as well. Now, have you done all that? Well, let's get into the video. Like I mentioned, the first of the games, Italy hosting the Red Roses out in Italy. And to start off our analysis, I'm going to reel off some stats for you. In 21 meetings with Italy, the Red Roses have won all 21, dating back to the 1991 World Cup. The Red Roses are on a 12-match winning run in the Six Nations. The Red Roses have won 22 of the last 23 tests, leading to going to New Zealand in 2019. In the last three games against Italy, Sam and Milton's side have scored over 150 points, with Italy only managing a penalty. In her last game against Italy, Sarah Hunter scored a hat-trick, and Poppy Cleela scored in three of her last four tests against Italy. Hearing them, you may think, wow, Italy have no chance, but it's my job to big them up. Despite having not played since they lost to England in the autumn, the Italians have prepared really well for this. When we heard from Sarah Hunter early in the week, she knows that they have the ability to neutralise her side attacking threats. The Italians have named an extremely strong team, with Manuel at Furlan captaining the side from the wing, which allows a really exciting Vittoria Astoni Minuzzi to start at fullback. Minuzzi can cause considerable danger to England's defensive line, in particular on kick return and sloppy ball, and alongside former Harlequins flanker Giada Franco, these are players I'd seriously consider putting into your fantasy team for this weekend. Elsewhere, the Italians have 95 times cap scrum half Sarah Barrettin, as well as Lucia Guy at prop, who's set to win her 71st cap. They've also got uncapped Gay Maurice and Alyssa Dinka on the bench. So what can the Italians and their coach Andrea Giudomenico do to the game to take to the Red Roses? As we saw back in 2019 when Italy finished sixth, second in the Six Nations, they have a capability to not only defend strongly, but attack well too. If Italy's back row of Franca and Alyssa Giordano can be a nuisance at the breakdown and slow down England's ball, the Red Roses will become frustrated and this is where the Italians pose their attacking threat. England's, off England's slow and loose ball. But we only have to look at England, in particular the back line, to see just how strong the side is. With Abby Dow returning and Ellie Kilden starting at fullback alongside Jess Breach, England arguably have one of the best back threes in the world and out on the pitch tomorrow. There's the electric Megan Jones playing at 12 to, par at, to play outside Helena Rowland, which I can, can't wait to see. It's what we've wanted all season. That's before we mention Emily Scarrett. And in the pack, Sarah Hunter returns to captain an England side after a 13 months absence. Zoe Allcroft and Kath O'Donnell are rewarded with their performances last week with another start. Now it's Matthews comes into the side and we know how well she's been playing for Worcester. And with a bench where you can put on against a tiring Italy side, the likes of Poppy, Poppy and Bryony Cleal, Sarah McKenna, Zoe Harris and Lark Davis, as well as the returning Harrop Hannah Bottoman. But this is where Simon Milton will want improvements from his side. And earlier this week I asked him if he's expecting more from his bench after he felt that like the performance levels dropped at times last week. We also heard from Leanne Riley, Amy Kilkane and Sarah Hunter. So here is what they had to say when we spoke to them earlier this week. There's been lots of obviously yellow cards, red cards in the men's premiership this season. Has there been a kind of focusing camp on avoiding these situations where there may be a high shot to the head or making focusing on not committing those penalties? Yeah, I think I think just in general we, we should probably have a focus on not smacking people in the head. Um, but it's just a really cheap, cheap um, like pen or even card to give away. You know, um, you, your technique is is huge, and I think we've had the likes of like Sarah Cox coming in a referee in um, our training sessions. We've had like internal games, which has been really good, um, and kind of just opened your eyes to how many probably tackles happen in a normal game of rugby. Like prior to this focus on on high tackles um, that happen normally. So um, I think it. This like shift of more cards happening in games will probably will probably happen still quite a lot more throughout these Six Nations um, across all the teams. But if it causes a change of lowering the tackle height and protecting people's heads, it's um, definitely only a positive thing. And with the increase in cards, has there been any focus in training on playing against 14 or playing against 13, 13 players? 
Um, well, he actually happens quite a lot at the minute because we try and have 30 people in camp, but sometimes we don't have 30 people that are fit. So there is quite a lot of opportunities um, where we have like 15 v 13. So actually on the bench um, at the weekend when we went down to 13, quite a lot of us that were on the bench, like we've trained for this, you know, we're normally the 13. So um, um, we get exposed to it, I suppose, accidentally. But um, yeah, it's something that we've been exposed to. And obviously, one of the strengths on the weekend with the catching drives, a couple of tries coming from it, has that been a lot of focus in camp with the lack of them in the Premier 15s due to the rules of kind of reducing contact in close close contact? Sorry, I think um, for like any team at the top level, your your captain drive has has got to be a weapon. It's something you have got to be good at. Um, you know, I've probably scored over half of my tries for England have just been having the ball at the back of a, of a mall. So um, it's something that we used to pride ourselves on as England, having a super strength of, of a driving line out. And that, that might have slipped away the last couple of seasons a little bit. So it's definitely something that we want to get back into our armoury. Obviously, a lot of the talk in the build was who's going to be wearing the 10 shirt. How much of, does that, who's wearing that 10 shirt, impact your game going into the weekend? Um, I think we've got a and the strength and depth in the squad is huge. Um, it's been really important for me to have time with all of the tens at the camp. Everyone is differently. So we were at Sam Zoe, met Ellie, we all did play a club with. They'll all come on differently. Me and obviously my game, I want to be putting the ball out in front so that they can play the game that they want to play. And like I say, they've all got their own way of doing so. For me, it's just been a learning curve of building that relationship with the tens and just recognising their body language to know what they want at certain times to make sure that it's right for them and the team. Obviously, Katie was around for a while in the attention and Zoe's been in an England camp for a while, but is relatively new to a starting year. How difficult is it to switch from someone who's been there for so long? Like you say, Zoe has been up together. Um, I think it was a run, um, you had a lot of her and Victoria Mason stuff in uh, time. So, my time with Katie has only probably really come about in the last kind of 12 to 18 months, I'd probably say. So, obviously, it's difficult, but again, I think as a professional player, we've got to put that time in aside, whether it's during training, before or after, so that they know how I play, I know how we play, and that we're just all on the same page. And slightly away from England, but looking at the Premier 15s, how much is the competitive competitiveness of the Premier 15s kind of influenced the form of a lot of players in this England camp? Oh, that's huge. L like you say, the amount of people that are playing week in out for their clubs uh the games are so much closer than before so you know previously you could go into certain games probably calling which way it's going to go you do that now it's very rare so i think the competitiveness to put your body on the line for your team week in week out um you know whether it's playing against these great england players that have been in camp it's been tough for us. It's only going to make us better players in the long run. Being exposed to that level of rugby on a more regular basis is only going to help us individually as our game. And obviously, as we then club together, um, again, learning more about each other to then pull together as a team. I mean, John briefly touched on kind of getting that complete performance um, from last week. And it's, part of that is comes from your bench. And tomorrow's bench is, uh, Saturday's bench is considerably strong. Are you excited to see what they can do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but to be honest, Sam, I thought we had a pretty strong bench as well last week. You know, we're, we're, and and they and they delivered pretty well when they came on. Uh, it's always a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? How do you want to go about uh, setting up your side with your starters and your finishers? And I think when you look at when you look at the side we've got and some of the players we've got, it, it, it could be very easy to to go one way or another. You know, it could be very easy to load a bench and bring some unbelievable power and pace on from the bench. Or you know you could start those players and, and, and try and get over a team earlier. So I think we're, we're a little bit blessed in that we can probably do both. Uh, as you say, I think we've got a we've got a really strong uh, sort of bench to come on this weekend. I think the message remains consistent to those and to the starters, and that's for, for us this week. It's about creating a performance that gets us to where we were at halftime last week, but then kicks on so that when those guys come off the bench, they're not coming on to try and 
solve a problem or they're not coming on to try and regenerate a performance. They're just they're coming on to actually take it to another level. And that, that's what we want because ultimately, uh, you know, the, the, the very biggest of games are going to be won and lost in the last sort of quarter of a game. And the role of the finishers is just absolutely huge. Uh, and, and will continue to, to to grow, I think, in terms of uh, in terms of outcomes for games. So yeah, we, we want to see we want to see another level when they come on, and I'm, and I'm sure they will. How much do you think Poppy Cleal Cleal will be raring to go after the performance last week, sitting on the bench this week? Yeah, again, you know, no, no player wants to be uh, rotated out or wants to be rotated onto the bench, even even though they they understand the the policy and. You know, it's a little bit. You know, that they, they accept it, uh, but it's like it's like it's like errors and things like that in games. You you learn to accept them, but you don't learn to tolerate them. And and that's good that they don't they don't want to tolerate being rotated on the bench. Poppy's no different. She wants to play every minute of every game. Uh, she's 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 in a rich vein of form at the moment. Uh, but it'll be interesting. What would be interesting to see if she can if she can stay with the 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 game until it's her turn to come on and make an impact and what that looks like. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see you. Certainly some firepower. And obviously Zoe comes back into the side after the, having to miss out last week. How good, is it, how good is it to have her back involved and back in the squad? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, and, and, you know, and she's been absolutely you know, terrific in training this week. Uh, yeah, really, uh, I touched on it last week a little bit, just, just how some of those young halfbacks are starting to grow now. Uh, you know, it was great to see Katie at the game last week. Uh, fantastic, you know, the, the, the girls had a presentation for her and everything. And they're big boots to fill. Uh, but we, we're starting to see it now in Ellen and Roland. And Zoe's been great in training this week. She's really stepped up both on and off the field. You know, she's excited, excited to get back in the field. We're excited to get her back on the field and see how she goes. So, uh, yeah, a, a great personality as well. Uh, her, and the, her and the Jess Breach show are always good value. So, I'm around the camp. So, <laughs> it's good to see them. And Hannah Bottomman coming back from injury, is it good to see her back in an England shirt as well? Yeah, you know, again, we talk about players who bring certain things uh, both on and on off the field, uh, and that's bots. So, but you know, she's got, uh, you know, she worked hard to get to get back on the field. Uh, she's had more than enough setbacks, so it'd be great to see her back. Uh, we'll see how she goes, and uh, you know, and, and then we'll we'll sort of make decisions based on on how a few people go off the back of this game and as to how we go forward into the back end of the, the competition. Cheers, Simon. And Sarah, how um, difficult was it being the water girl, the communications person last week and watching the your teammates take to the field in the opening round? No, it was probably easier than um, sitting watching at home, you know, just being around camp and still being able to be involved. And especially after after such a long period away from the squad, it was it was nice to to be there and to be able to contribute in some way, you know, like be that sort of message and sort of between the, the coaches and the players and 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 yeah, and just help support the team. So where it, Whereas it was, um, you'd rather be out there playing, like like Simon's just touched on, like you understand the the, the rationale for for decisions and and yeah, just being able to to still be a part. And I think it's it's really important that um, whilst the team that takes the field gets that job done at that particular one point, I think what we've had over the last sort of four months, even longer than that, as we've had a, a big training squad and and everyone pays their part. So whilst, you know, um, not everyone got to play on Saturday, you know, we've got such a wider squad that the way we train now um, and the competition it brings in training just adds to those people to be able to perform the way they can do. So, so yeah, it's uh, you want to be out there playing, but actually to, to run water, to help the guys, we're, we're, still, um, we're still pretty good rather than being sat home and, and watching it on the, on the TV being helpless. Perfect. Cheers. Thanks, Sarah. Well, what I would say is, Sam, when I told Sarah she won't play in, the very first thing she said to me is, can I run the water and do the messages? Can I stay in camp? And I was like, yeah, that was unbelievable. The next game is the game we'll be covering this weekend on Saturday with Wales taking on Ireland at Cardiff Arms Park, and I cannot wait. We're obviously more accustomed with the Wales side and we've seen them lots in the Premier 15 so far this season, so we'll come to them second. 
But the last time we saw Ireland take to the pitch was when they beat Italy in Donnybrook back in October, which secured them third in last year's championship. And Adam Griggs has made three changes to the starting 15 from that day. The first change sees Ireland's seven star Eve Higgins make a debut in the centres, where she partners Sydney Naopu. The other change sees Afra McDermott come into the second row, long and Ema Considine start at fullback, which allows Sales Lauren Delaney to shift to the wing alongside the prolific Bevian Parsons, another potential fantasy rugby star, so keep an eye out for her. Ireland also have two debutants on the bench in Munster's Emily Lay and Leinster's Stacey Flood. Despite Ireland having not played since October, they've been building up nicely for this fixture and strongly, with a large number of camps, and the whispers coming from these camps seems like they're very confident coming into this one, and to be honest, I can see why. Their three Premier 15s players in the aforementioned Delaney, as well as the Wasp duo of Claire Malloy and the dangerous Cleod and the Maloney are all on strong form for their side, and have played week in and week out against their Welsh opponents, which may play to their advantage. If we take a, local, take a closer look at those opponents in Wales, and Warren Abrams has made four changes to his side that struggled to get out of the blocks last week against a strong and dominant French side. Abrahams has named two new props in Cara Hope and Keris Hale, and elsewhere Brit Bristol's Natalia John and Courtney Kite coming to the starting 15, with Kite replacing her Bristol teammate, Charles Joyce. Gloucester Hartbury's Robin Wilkins is set to win her 50th Welsh cap from fullback, with Abrahams putting her tr his trust in the inexperience of Jess Roberts from Sale Sharks at Scrum Half. I think this one's going to be really tight, but I'd put Ireland slight favourites, but the Welsh already having got their campaign underway, I think that's going to be uh, really important for them. It gives them a slight advantage, having already played the conditions, already know what's going on, rules, the discipline, they'll have that discipline set this week. So I can see this one going both ways. I'm not going to sit on the fence, I'm going to lean towards an Ireland win, and, but I think it's going to be close and it's going to be really tight. I actually think it's one of the going to be most exciting games of the Six Nations so far. So thank you for watching this Women's Rugby Show video. Hope you've enjoyed your cup of tea if you had one. Um, make sure you keep an eye out across all our social media co channels this weekend as we bring you content from the Ireland versus Wales game. We're really excited to be there and we're really excited to bring you content from it as well. Also keep an eye out in the next week for our content coming out for this week on YouTube as well as more videos as the Premier 15 returns to action as well. So thank you for watching and don't forget to make sure you like this video, subscribe to the Women's Rugby Show on YouTube and follow us across all social medias. Thank you, goodbye, and enjoy your weekend.